Hi everyone, uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm a current incoming MD PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. And today we'll be talking about how to choose between different MD PhD programs. So you've gone through the interview process, you've applied to different schools, and now you have a number of acceptances waiting on your table. How do you decide between these different programs? For many MD programs, I think there's a lot of really good resources out there that break down what are the different factors that you should be thinking about but I don't think there's many out there for MD PhD programs specifically. So what I'm hoping to do today is kind of outline my own decision thinking, my own, sorry, my own decision making process. And hopefully this will give you some sense on like what things that you should also be thinking about as well. So the way I'm gonna break down this video is I'm gonna break it down by category of things that I think are most important. Keep in mind that this is just solely my opinion based on my own experiences. Other people that you might talk to might have different ideas and, and things that they value as most important. Um, so just take everything I say with a grain of salt. Okay, so the first thing that I think is probably the most important is cost. Many MD PhD programs in the US are what we call medical science training programs or MSTPs, where cost basically doesn't become an issue anymore. So the idea is that in these MSTPs, you actually receive federal funding uh, to cover the cost of your tuition, you usually get healthcare benefits, all that stuff, and you also get a living stipend as well. And so the idea is that you don't really have to take out any student loans, you don't have to take out just any loans in general because everything's going to be covered for you. And these types of programs, cost really isn't that big of an issue. Um, but there are also some other programs that are not medical science training programs and you actually do have to pay for the first two plus years of medical school or even more. You also have to take out loans to cover living expenses, healthcare, all that stuff. And so if you know cost is an important factor for you, you have to think about these things and you know whether to only apply to MSTP programs or whether to expand your you know application radius to MD PhD programs in general as well. The next most important thing I would say is probably location. So this is a thing that I think a lot of people don't think about until after the application process is over. Location's really big because think about it, like you're gonna be spending eight plus years at one particular location. And so you really wanna make sure that you're picking a place that actually, you know, you vibe with well and that it's just a good fit for you. It's a substantial amount of time and then, you know, like life doesn't wait for you to finish your MD PhD training. So for example, some of the questions that pertain to location are, do you want to be close to family, right? Um, do you uh, want to settle down on a particular side of the, the US? So West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, um, after graduation and you want to do your residency in a particular location. For example, um, it's well documented that if you want to do your residency and ultimately settle down on the West Coast in you know, California, you should probably stay on the West Coast for your medical school training because it's a lot harder to come back from the East Coast to the West Coast. And again, life goes on you know, during your academic training and you shouldn't be in like the student mentality, right? Like you're, you're a young functioning professional adult, right? Um, and so you have to think about, you know, what type of people do you want to form a community with, right? Um, if even things like, you know, if you want to have kids down the road during the later stages of your training or even early stages, um, where would be a good place to raise them? Um, all of these things, you know, many of these questions you might not have like an exact answer to, but it's good to be consciously thinking about these things and give yourself the best fighting chance to um, hopefully set yourself up for success, not only in your academic career, but just overall in life as well. So to, to really emphasize how important location is, um, I remember during my own interview process, I think virtually every school asked me why I would actually move out of California to come to their school. Um, so for some context, I grew up in California for 21 years. I've, I've lived in California my whole life. And so when I was interviewing at a school in Tennessee or in Ohio, um, it, they, they really wanted to make sure that I had a good reason for moving out to, um, you know, kind of a place that I, I didn't know anything about um, and I didn't have any family members there or anything like that. And so I had to actively go out of my way to say, you know, that I was one, interested in moving out of California and two, I had actively chosen not to apply to many California schools because my own personal preference is that I want to kind of explore the rest of the US and see what else besides California that uh, the United States has to offer. So the bottom line from this is that everyone, you know, applicants and admissions committees and everyone 
they know that most people like to stay in state for a good reason, right? And so I would encourage you to think very carefully on, um, you know, what things are most important for you. And if you can visit the school beforehand, you know, either during the interview process or for me during COVID, I had to visit outside of the interview process. Really just make sure that you like the community and not just the school as well. So both the school and the community. So number three is life factors. This I think ties really closely to location, um, but just things like, you know, again, do you want to be close to family if you have a very close tight knit family in a particular part of the US? Um, if you have like a partner and they've only been in, you know, if they accepted to a certain medical school, um, I would value, you know, kind of staying with my partner um, whenever possible. Um, and, you know, just things like that, I think you should take into account you know, a lot of people tend to not prioritize these things and instead just focus on, you know, what's the best academic fit. But really, again, you want to pick somewhere that you can actually like thrive in over the next eight years. So number four is school culture. And that's really just kind of how the school and the, you know, administration treats its MD PhD students. This can be kind of difficult to get a sense of if you don't, if you aren't able to like actually talk to um, current students during the interview process. Um, but I think this is really important. So to give you like an example, um, so there were a couple of MD PhD students at Caltech that I was really close with, and my impression was that they had like um, like very little institutional oversight, and they had to largely be independent and figure things out. Um, which had its fair share of benefits, but also when it came time to, you know, apply for F30s and other types of, you know, uh, grants to support their research, for instance, they had to figure out that very complicated process by themselves. Um, contrast to, you know, my experiences talking with current students at um, UPenn, which is where I'm currently going to be going. Um, they have multiple rounds of like not only students peer reviewing, uh, but also professors that will look over your grant applications and give you access to resources on prior grants that other students have written that have actually won the award, stuff like that. So really you want, at least my personal opinion is that I really wanted a school that, that really valued its students and was able to provide them as much support as possible to navigate a very complex academic kind of like system. On the same note of school culture is definitely class size. So uh, different MD PhD programs across the US have different class sizes. Some of them can be as small as like five to six students in the class and some of them can be as big as like 30 to 40 students. Um, and you can find anything in between. I think the average size is probably like 12 to 15 students per school um, in the MSTB class. Um, and so depending on if you want a lot of people in your cohort or like not many, class size is definitely something to think about as well. And also if you just vibe with the incoming class, you know. So I think a really great way to get to know like the people that are going to be attending your school with you is to attend revisit weekend after you've been accepted. So revisit weekend is basically this opportunity where all admitted students that are interested in a program can get together in around like April timeframe. Um, and are able to revisit the school and see if they actually want to go there. And that's usually a really great way to meet um, potential classmates because it's usually like 70 to 80% of like the people that you meet every visit actually end up going to the school. Okay, so number five is research opportunities. Um, different schools, I think, specialize in different types of research. So as a good example, um, you know, Caltech, for instance, um, many of their research labs, they are very kind of like basic science. Um, and so if you want to do something that has a lot of like clinical significance, you want to be directly working with patients, working with things like phase one, phase two clinical trials, it's going to be really hard to do that at a place like Caltech. And, you know, other institutions might have their own things that they're good at. And so if you know particularly what you want to do for your PhD, you want to make sure that there are ample research opportunities and there is a good list of PIs that you might be interested in working with um, that kind of align with your research interests, um, even if they change down the road. And last but not least, there's the nature of the medical school training that you'll be getting during your MD phase. Um, in general, I think it's pretty standardized across many different programs, or at least that's my impression. 
Um, but there are some subtle nuances that might affect the pathway of how you get trained during your clinical years. Um, so as a good example, so for example, Harvard has their health sciences and technology pathway that's very different from other programs across the US. Basically during your first two years of preclinical work, it's solely classroom based and it's, you know, you don't really spend time uh, working with patients in the clinic. Um, and you really learn a lot of like hardcore science and programming that kind of supplement your knowledge of like the human body and things like that. So if you're really analytical and you really want to get that like um, really interdisciplinary approach to medicine, then HST might be a really good choice for you. But for other people, it might not be a great pathway for them. Another thing, for instance, is that one thing that really drew me to UPenn was that they also had an emphasis on like learning new technologies that would be used in the clinic. So things like actually teaching students how to use ultrasound, right? Not, not many programs, I think the US currently teach their students ultrasound skills. And so for me, like as someone that, you know, was really invested in like different medical technologies and it's something that I'm actually interested in working with in the future, that was something that I was really looking for in my decision-making process. So those are the six things that I think are probably most important for you to be thinking about whether you're currently applying, will be applying, or have already applied and are currently thinking about where to go. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.